Uh, so we're really excited today uh, to welcome the speakers, but before we do that, we wanted to give um, Mike McGinn a chance to tell you a little bit about the activities of the club, the Next Generation IT Club this year. As you know, it's our um, Cascadia's um, IT uh, student organization, which means they get money, right, to do stuff, fun stuff. So, uh, and it's money you've already spent, because when you signed up for a class here, you paid a student fee that goes to the clubs. And so, you know, make use of these clubs. They're really yours to make use of, and Mike's gonna tell you about how to do that. Thank you, Brian. Um, so, two really cool things we're doing uh, for the rest of this year, and hopefully on into the future, um, depending on, fun on funding. Uh, but we offer free student website hosting now industry standard cPanel web host account uh, that comes with five email addresses, uh, 256 megabytes of um, space on, on the server for your website uh, project portfolios that you've been creating in class. And uh, at the end of each class, it goes away, so now you've got a place to live. Uh, so you can uh, stay there for up to three years. We, we, this is what the plan is. So hopefully throughout your entire career here at Cascadia and for a year after you're graduating, you'll have access to this uh, portfolio um, at no cost to you, thanks to the student funds. Um, the other thing that we're doing is a uh, game design competition, uh, not really a competition yet, but a, uh, a workshop, and we're planning a tech fair coming up uh, at the, uh, sometime at the end of the spring quarter. We'll have uh, some industry folks come in and do some presentations and kind of in the air as to what the specifics are yet, but if anyone's interested in helping, helping us plan it, please join the club. Uh, we have our meetings on Wednesdays from 11 to 1 p.m. Currently, we in the room of CC3234. Uh, it may be moving right out here in the breakout area at some point in the future, depending on uh, logistics for using that space for club stuff. Yeah, so we have a lot of time in the energy speech from 1 to 3 p.m. Right. Uh, we, we have changed that uh, because uh, the uh, uh, majority of our members had other commitments during that time frame, and it worked better for our advisor, uh, Brian, to be able to uh, attend the meetings earlier in the day. I like um, it better, too. Thank you. Does, does it work better for you? Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Um, and I just wanted to pass out the flyer to everybody. So uh, it's free to sign up for the West Coast team. Just go to the site, read the instructions, follow the directions, and you're, you're good to go. Instantly provision. And you get a, uh, a free subdomain of uh, your whatever you pick as a username, .tngtic.com. And that's, that works for the public. And that will be uh, available after you sign up for the account. It takes about an hour and a half to two hours for that domain to, to work. Um, this is a great way to get your portfolio online. Other than hosting it off the campus. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much, and uh, we look forward to seeing you at the meetings if you're at all that good. And if you have a project idea that involves information technology in any way and want to present that and perhaps get some money from the club uh, budget to, to make it happen, we're always willing to uh, entertain ideas if you just jot it down and send us an email or bring in a presentation, a PowerPoint, or something like that on the idea. We'd love to vote love to on it and get you some money. Thanks, Michael. Yep. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce Rebecca Cooper. Many of you have met Rebecca already, um, but um, for those of you at, that haven't, Rebecca is um, the internship coordinator um, and is really just done a great job in, in lining up uh, excellent speakers for the speaker series. I want to thank her for that. Uh, but also, she's been working uh, tirelessly to go out there and find some really exciting internships. And so we thought we'd start a new trend here for the speaker series to have Rebecca come in and just sort of highlight one or two internships that are posted up on the internship board. Um, so if you don't know where that is online, talk to me or Rebecca afterwards, because you need to be uh, kind of checking into that if you're at all looking for an internship. So Rebecca wanted to just tell you about a couple of those uh, before we get to our speakers. And, and for 
question my, my glasses broke. <laughs> Before I came over here, I can see all of you find it, but we're <laughs> like, So anyway, uh, well, one of the first internships is a graphics intern in Basel. And they say for the right person, they'll be paying. So it's a possible paid internship. It's an entry level with um, a growing branding and signage agency in Bothell, so it's nearby. Um, they need someone with Corel, Illustrator, and Photoshop experience. And it's a 60 to 90 day internship. So that's just right in, in the area. And this other one's, a, a, I think it's a pretty exciting one. It's actually based in Olympia, but they said in here, I'm reading the email, the special opportunity for Cascadia Community College students if at least two students from your school apply and are accepted for this internship, they'll make special arrangements so that they, the students can participate from the distance, so you don't actually have to go to Olympia. Um, but it's, it's a company, an organization called the Northwest Eco Building Guild and Thurston Climate Action Team. They're starting a new symposium series in March of 2012, and it's a public interest conservation conversation on sustainability in the built environment. Um, the target audience is local and state government elected officials and staff, construction industry professionals, including ancillary professions, and also academic and student audience. So it covers a broad range of, of um, audience. And over February and March, they'll perform branding and web development, which will create the tools for outreach and publicity. Um, they'll be developing the website Developing a website will be a central part of the process and involve and integrate multiple social media, blogging, video documentation, and online distribution. So if you want more information from that or about that, just give me a call or stop by. I'm over in LBA 102E, which is right across from the library. Any questions? Yes. So there, you're there by Milby's office? I'm right there by Milby's office. Awesome. Yeah. Everybody knows where Milby's office is. <laughs> <laughs> And if you haven't gone and uh, had a one-on-one -on -one with Rebecca yet to chat with her about your interest in, in your career track, um, please do that. She's a uh, great resource. So set up that, set up an appointment. That's R. Cooper at Cascadia. R. Cooper, right up on the board. All right, so uh, let's not waste any more time to, with our speakers, to get to our speakers. So um, we're welcoming today um, Kirsten Thompson and Annie O'Dell from Creative Circle. Um, they've uh, both been with Creative Circle for, for a bit, and Creative Circle is a recruiting agency in Seattle, uh, downtown Seattle, but they work in the greater Puget Sound area to help really folks like you uh, find work find the work that you're going to love and do great work with. Uh, so Kirsten uh, has been with Creative Circle for, is it uh, four years? Yeah. Almost, yeah. And uh, before that worked um, with an ad agency um, a publicist for five years as a project manager. So she has a lot of background in the, in the field. And uh, Annie, um, I think you're newer to mm -hmm. Creative Circle, from what Brian was saying. But um, her background is really interesting in working in radio and doing a lot of uh, promotion uh, in radio. So they're both uh, excited to tell you about the work that Creative Circle does and how you can uh, get connected and use the work of recruiters, their work, to help you uh, succeed in your work. So let's give them a
off-site telecommuting stuff. It can be on-site 40 hours a week, like a normal full-time job. Um, we do contract to hire or freelance to full-time placements, um, as well as full-time salary positions where you just get hired on the company right away. Um, so the full spectrum there. Um, clients that we work with range from you know, ad agencies to big marketing departments. We work with startups that are in a you know small room in Queen Anne doing web development to you know AT and T or T Mobile. So really the full scope there, a um, really wide range of clients. Um, yeah, I mean and the great thing about working uh, with Creative Circle, kind of our, our specialty, is that everybody that works for us comes from that same industry that we represent. So Brian told you a little bit about our background. So kind of having that perspective not only helps us understand our, our candidates, the people that we work with, and what they do but also what our clients are looking for. So we can really find that great career match um, for your skill set to really help you move forward in, in your career field and your resume. And you know, our role is, and sort of our process is that, and I don't know if you guys have worked with staffing agencies before, um, and again, everyone is different and has a different process, but um, when we work with candidates, uh, we meet with everyone in person, um, sit down with them, get them registered with Creative Circle, learn about experience, work that you've done, types of jobs that you're interested in. And then once someone's registered with us, then we start talking and calling you about the actual jobs that we're working on. So we do our best to really get a good sense of the types of things that you would want to be hearing about from us as a, as a company. Um, but also because of that, as, as recruiters, you know, um, we're, we're looking at resumes all day, we're working on jobs and seeing what the market is like out there. Um, so definitely, you know, hopefully have a good sense of what there, what are things you could be doing, you know, on your resume or on your portfolio site that might get, you know, more interest from clients that you've been sending to, types of internships that we would recommend, that sort of thing. Um, so we'd really more than anything just like to, to be a resource to you guys for questions that you guys have about your job search, things that have been working, things that maybe haven't been working. Um, you know, questions about what you have about resumes or interviews, really anything, because we work for on the whole cycle of, you know, the moment you send your resume to us, to the moment we send you to a client for an interview, to the moment you accept a job or a position with a client. Um, so really just would love to open it up and hear more about your experience, you know, in your job search, either for, you know, jobs or for internships, um, and questions that you have for us about, you know, your job search. Oh, we have lots of bracelets. So, I, I've uh, joined the, the Creative Circle uh, uh -huh. network, and um, I really enjoy the, the frequency that you send out your uh, job search announcements. Um, right. It gives me a great opportunity to kind of see what's going to be in demand when I get uh, when I graduate mm -hmm. here. Um, and uh, I just wanted to make sure I was doing the right process. Right. Um, when I get those emails, I just attach my resume and I just reply back to it. Absolutely, yes. And then what do you do with it from that point? Um, well, the, the recruiter works with it. So when we send out a job alert, and, and let me just back up real quick because I don't know how familiar everyone is with the alerts that we send out. Okay. So just to give you um, information on what he's mentioning is, so one way that we work is um, when we get a new job and someone comes to me and says, Kirsten, you know, we need a PowerPoint presentation designer to start tomorrow. I would send out to everyone that's registered on our website, send out an alert that's clicked off that they're interested in PowerPoint design jobs. Send an alert that we just got that job in. Um, and anyone that's interested and available will be able to email back and say, I'm interested. So that's what you've been doing, but for web development type jobs. So when you email back to the job description and say you're interested, you're doing the absolutely right thing, your reply is going to the recruiter that's working on that job. So it's the best way to let the right person know that you're interested in the job that they're working on. Um, what you might be running into is a lot of times some of our, our jobs that we have are starting like the next day, right? And we haven't gone through the process of meeting with someone, sitting down with them, checking their references. So we may be working with a candidate that's already come in and formally registered with us that we can just go ahead and send right away because we've sort of crossed off all the boxes, the reference checks and stuff. Um, but responding to jobs and saying that you're interested, qualified, available is the best way to let us know. Um, and the next step would be with the timing works out, recruiter working on that with 
bring you and get you registered with us so we can send you to the job. So that job that other ones are working on. I mean, I'm actually, thing, sorry, go ahead, um, I've actually come into the office and okay. done that registration process, so I just want to make okay. sure I was following the right that yeah. procedure. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you know, the thing is, we're, we have four recruiters right now that could, you know, definitely grow. You know, when I started, we were three recruiters, and now we're four, and obviously people move and stuff like that. But, um, you know, we're all working on different jobs. So sometimes Annie, you know, is working on a job or is not with a candidate, you know, and we do our best to share the intellectual property within the room we sit about this far away from each other. <laughs> um, so, but the emails are a great way, right, for someone like me that maybe doesn't know that Annie has met with someone. You respond and I see your information, I see that Annie met with you, and I go, perfect, you know? Mm -hmm. Up until this moment, I didn't know he was a candidate, you know, and then I, I'll call you at the job and run it by you. Another thing we always take into consideration, and, and, the, and the approach that we take with recruiting is, is very targeted. So we um, have conversations with our client about what they're looking for in a candidate. Not necessarily just like the job description and skill set, but also the soft skills, kind of, you know, because personality and culture fit is, is a big deal in the workplace these days, and for you as well. So we have conversations with the hiring manager, ask them some specific questions, okay, what sort of background stands out to you? If it's a development and design kind of thing, what are you looking for in a portfolio? So that when we send people um, as, as potential candidates for a job, we usually send about two to three people initially um, that we think would be that really perfect fit for them, get some feedback, and then kind of hone our search from there. Because it's really a waste of, of you know, your time and the client's time if we just send like 15 people, here's all you know, all of our great .NET developers, pick one. You know, we really try to take a more humanized approach to that. So when you're putting together your portfolio or replying to those jobs like you have been doing, Mike, if they're looking for something specific that's kind of your specialty, <coughs> like a .NET developer, for example, you know, clearly defining your portfolio, you know, here's a, a .NET development job I worked on, here's some of the other languages and technologies I used in that, here was my role, um, did you work with a team, was it in an agile scrum environment, you know, some of those key words really stand um, and also keep in mind, both on your resume and your portfolio, um, when, when clients are looking at it, they're under their own time pressures and constraints as well. So the more clear and concise you can make things in as far as the layout goes, uh, the, the better off they will be. Uh, another thing to take really great advantage of is those of people that do have work experience. Now, I know that's really tough for people that are just getting out of school, but it sounds like Cascadia has a really great internship program, and you guys are doing some real client work. Too. So that's another really good thing to, to note on there um, as far as, you know, which projects are school projects and common work and which projects are real client work that makes you a really strong candidate in your eyes. And it's just wondering if you could talk a little more about the soft skills that you mentioned. Like, what are the, some of those key ones that uh, sure. the clients are looking for? Absolutely. I mean, it definitely, definitely depends on, on the role, of course. But a lot of things that we hear about are, you know, certainly the ability to, to work directly with clients, you know. Someone that has, you know, good communication skills can confidently present work or present, you know, technical solutions to clients, especially clients that aren't particularly technical, you know. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's an art to be, being able to speak to people about technical things that aren't technical without speaking down to them, right? Um, and that's something that's, that's a difficult thing to negotiate for, for everyone, really. Um, so that's one thing. I think also just, you know, the, the best practice type um, things that we always hear about from clients, you know, reliability, good communication, you know, knowing, especially if someone's working off-site or remotely or, you know, doing off-site with meetings. Clients want to know that um, they're important, you know, and that where things are at and not feel like they have to be going to someone for, for updates as they're getting them, you know, sort of preemptively. Um, so that's something that we hear a lot. Um, what would you say, what else? I mean, I would just say we, we get them all over the board. Yeah. If there's people that want to be, you know, something that can be client-facing and have direct conversations with, you know, the client that's, you're working in an agency and they're doing work for Microsoft and you can talk to that person at Microsoft and they can know that you have that skill to be able to do that. Other people want, you know, you've worked in an agile scrum environment, you're being teamwork. Collaborative, collaboratively with your workers in the office. Other people just want a developer that's really independent. 
nothing worse than putting somebody super social and highly creative in an environment that they just won't be able to sit at their desk and be quiet and do the work and do it on time. Um, that wouldn't be a, a good fit for anybody. Yeah. That's the good thing about working with a staffing agency. I mean, it doesn't always happen, but we do our best to, when we're talking to our candidates about a job that we're working on, hopefully set them up for success. Say, this is the kind type of environment that's looking for you to sit at your computer and just you know, work away on stuff, not really ask a ton of questions or challenge the way things are going. They really want someone that's going to be an individual contributor. Um, or you might have a client that's looking for someone that's going to push the work further, ask questions about why they're using a technology, make recommendations for something that might be more successful. Um, and that's good to let you guys know that before you go into an interview with that client. Whereas when you're applying something on Craigslist or Monster, you don't have that context necessarily. Um, but we try and get it for you so when you're going through an interview with us, with a client, you know points to hit, you know, and, and know things to, to talk about and an approach that you take that might be really interesting to them. Um, so we do our best to do that, especially with clients that we've worked with a lot where we know sort of where the, the hot points are for them and um, things to watch out for and, and that sort of thing.